The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world And the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm not really sure how often this happens. I don't think it's every three years, but this year in our lectionary cycle, that cycle of Bible readings, we have now heard all three Christmas stories that are in the Bible. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, that was December 22nd, we heard the Christmas story according to Matthew. It starts, now the birth of Jesus took place this way. It's a story about Joseph. Learning that his beloved Mary was pregnant, he knew he wasn't the daddy. But then an angel came in a dream and said he was to marry her anyways, for the child was of God. And he, Joseph, was to name this child Jesus, and he will be known as Emmanuel, God with us. And then Christmas Eve, the most traditional, I suppose, story. This one comes from the Gospel of Luke. It's with the animals. Mary and Joseph are on their way to Bethlehem. They had to go there because Caesar ordered a census. And when they were in Bethlehem, they discovered that there was no place for them. There are no beds available, no vacancy. Their families were, the houses were all filled up. So they ended up staying in the stable with the animals. And then Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and laid him in a manger. Now at the same time that evening there were shepherds out on the hills, right? And because a host of angels came, they learned that a Savior had been born. And they went to Bethlehem and they were the first visitors. And then today, today we get to the Christmas story, according to John, the gospel of John. And I know we don't hear a thing about Mary or Joseph. We don't have shepherds or angels. We don't have cows and sheep and llamas and heifers or whatever else we had in our Christmas pageant. We don't have any of it. But it is The Christmas story, the Christmas story from John, and in typical John fashion, it's poetic. It's big picture stuff. It's filled with images and metaphor, and it has a depth of meaning. So let's take a look at it this morning. 
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning. John takes us back all the way to the beginning, and not only the beginning of time in the beginning, but very intentionally to the beginning of the Hebrew Scriptures, the creation story, the first creation story. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and we are to get this sense that something new is being put together. Something new is happening. And that something new happened like it did in the beginning through a word. In Genesis, that first creation story, God said, let there be, spoke a word, and it was, and it was good. In this Christmas story, God is once again doing something through the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. We read, the Word became flesh and lived among us. That's it, right there. There's the Christmas story. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Now, well, there's lots of mystery in the gospel according to John, and there is poetic language. We never know what John's quite trying to tell us sometimes. There is no wondering about who Jesus is. There is no wondering that Jesus is God. There's no wondering that Jesus is the divine, the Word Jesus was not only with God, the Word was God and came and lived among us. There is no wondering about that. Jesus came, divine, to bring life, abundant life, meaningful life to you and to me. Jesus came to bring light, light in the midst of the darkness. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And it's light that I want to reflect on it just a few moments here. Light. We in this part of the world at this time of the year understand how precious light is. And I would say we're on the upswing here. We've gained eight minutes of daylight since the winter solstice. I looked it up just yesterday. Eight minutes. Woo! <laughs> but nevertheless, we are still living with more darkness than we would like to live with. And you know what? It impacts what we do and when we do that, right? Gail and I like going snowshoeing behind our house. And we usually snowshoe in the middle of the day at lunchtime, take the dog out with us, and he bounces the snow, and we get a little bit of exercise. Well, one day, I think it was just last week, I didn't get home at lunchtime. We went at the end of the afternoon. Yeah, we knew that it was getting a little dark. We didn't have too much time, but we went anyways. And we were having good time, and the darkness is coming upon us. And, well, you know when it gets dark? It's harder to climb over fallen trees and under branches. And the thing is, I took a wrong turn. The pe you know, it's really deep snow out there. I can't believe how much snow there is in the woods. And, and I couldn't see where I normally would go, and so we just kind of took a left here, and oh my goodness, going underneath things through the brush, and it's getting dark. And because I took the wrong turn, I wasn't really recognizing where we were. Now, we weren't very far from the house. We could have probably seen it. I don't know, but it was dark. Kind of lost my way. Obviously, we got home, right? I mean, you know the end of the story because I'm standing here. But I'm going to be careful not to get caught in the dark. But get this. Get this. This Friday, it's on my calendar. This Friday is a full moon. And if it's clear this Friday, the light of that full moon will brighten the dark sky and there'll be enough light from that full moon to push the darkness back. And I have promised in front of all of you now that even though it might be past my bedtime, 
I will go snowshoeing with you in the moonlight. <laughs> and I'll be back the next Sunday to tell you all about it. Just a little light can make all the difference. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Oh, how I wish the promise were a little bit different. I wish the promise here was that the light came and banished the darkness once and for all. Oh, how I wish it said the light came and obliterated the darkness, that the light came and abolished, did away with every form of darkness, every disease, every cause of suffering, all despair, every life-giving struggle. Wouldn't that be great? But it doesn't say that. It does not say that, which is good in a kind of twisted sort of way, I suppose. Because if it actually said that, I would say, huh, that's not my life experience. But true to life, the Christmas story recognizes darkness all around it doesn't sugarcoat things saying that life is now perfect. The Word became flesh and lived among us. It's perfect. What it does say is that in spite of all the darkness, there is a light. A light that shines in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the reality of struggle, whatever your struggle might be. The good news is that a light has come for you in the midst of the darkness. I came across the writing of a pastor who wrote about a time that he took his family on a, on a trip, if you will, on a tour to an underground cave. And he writes this, several hundred yards into the cave, the leader had a stop and sit down and turn off our headlamps. One by one, the lights clicked off until we were enveloped by an utter and impenetrable blackness. It was the most profound blackness I had ever experienced. It made no difference if my eyes were opened or closed. You couldn't see the hand in front of your face. It was all the same. And then after a while of silence, the leader turned on his headlamp. Oh, the light. The light from one six-volt flashlight. <laughs> it was enough for us to see. It was enough to push back the darkness where we could see the cave wall. Just a little light. When the lights were out, before he turned that light on, the leader asked how hard we thought it would be to find our way out of the cave without any light. We all said it would be impossible. Any attempt would be dangerous since we wouldn't be able to see the hazards. We wouldn't be able to see the slippery places. We wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a two-foot drop and a 20-foot drop. The leader agreed and then said... You're pretty lucky. This particular cave is pretty popular. People come by and go on this tour every week, several times a week, in fact. If you were to get caught down here in the dark, the best thing for you to do would be to sit down and to wait for someone else to enter the cave and find you. In spite of darkness all around us, it's not hard to see the darkness or be reminded of the darkness. Hate and intolerance on the rise. Political divisions causing us to lose friendships. Threats of war. Troops being deployed. Compassion eroding. Compassion for others who are perhaps not like us. It's all darkness. In spite of darkness all around us, 
the Christmas story is all about one who has come into the midst of the darkness, the darkness of the world and the darkness of our lives as light, enough to push back the darkness. And he sits alongside of us. God in Jesus has climbed right down into the darkest places to be with us. We are not alone. You are not alone. The light shines. And now as people who have seen the light, as people who have been enveloped by the light, as people who have embraced the light, people who know we are children of God, we are to share that light and to shine that light into others' lives. That's why we give what we give and do what we do as this family of faith. But you know what? We're to do that individually too, and we are to do that all the time. So I have some homework for you. This week, beginning today, before you speak, before you interact, before you act, before you react, ask yourself this simple question. Will what I'm about to do or say spread the light or cause darkness to spread? I want to end with a piece by Michael Doherty. Maybe you've seen it on Facebook. Chaz, can you click ahead? I forgot to tell you about that. There it is. When the carols have been stilled, when the star-topped tree is taken down, when family and friends are gone home, when we are back to our schedules, the work of Christmas begins. To welcome the refugee to heal a broken planet, to feed the hungry, to build bridges of trust, not walls of fear, to share our gifts, to seek justice and peace for all people, to bring Christ's light to the world. Amen. Please stand.